All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Mark Gunlock, who is from the Build Staffing Group. How are you doing, Mark? I'm doing well. How are you, John? And you're the co-founder of this uh, of this uh, staffing group. Uh, great talent drives great results, and we always we all know that we're in a war for talent today with the way the economy is. Um, but what I, the area that I really wanted to talk to Mark about is the perennial issue of hiring salespeople, finding and recruiting salespeople, because it just seems like throughout my career. I've never figured it out, and most people I talk to have never figured out a a foolproof way or a good way of recruiting salespeople. And it's the number one right. issue that always comes up when I talk to business leaders. It's like I don't know how to find good salespeople. So, Mark, yeah. let's talk sales recruiting. Absolutely. So, what is that? What are your thoughts on that? Why is recruiting for sales, at least on the surface, so much more difficult than recruiting for other positions? Well, what I was. Uh... I would say it's probably a couple things. So I, I think the first step for anyone is knowing exactly what you're looking for, right? Um, mm -hmm. I need salespeople is usually not enough, right? So we want to make sure that, you know, whoever you're going after, that you've created that profile up front. I like to call it the perfect plant candidate profile, mm -hmm. right? So developing and, and going very much, very in-depth with just about everything that you could come up with um, about that type of person that you're looking for. So get that, get that profile completely dialed in, knowing what you're going after first. The second thing is, is also knowing what you and your company are all about. What are your core values, right? And so when you're recruiting salespeople, you know, to those core values, put those on the forefront, knowing exactly what you're, um, putting out to your clientele and knowing what your salespeople need to exude to that clientele is going to have to be, is going to be very key. So you want to make sure that when you're sending out your recruiting messages, that it, it ties into those core values that your company is all about. So it's an interesting point on that because I do think a lot of companies don't really know what their core values are, what their culture is, or mm -hmm. some of them fall into the trap of maybe you, know, you see how other people do it and you think, oh, that looks really cool. Maybe I should project ourselves like that. But the two don't actually sync up. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think that it can be a daunting uh, task for some people or for some organizations to come up with what those core values are, especially if you have a lot of um, input. So if you have a large leadership team and everybody has their different opinions, it really, it's going to have to be a, a, like, I like to do whiteboard sessions, just mm -hmm. like throw ideas up against the wall. Let's just put a bunch of things up there and let's see if we can narrow it down to a good list of seven to 10 core values that really resonate with us that we want to get across to the clientele that we're going after. And then can we get our internal team to buy in? So another thing on salespeople particularly, right? So the best salespeople are employed. And the best salespeople are the best salespeople because they sell a lot and they're making money. And gen and generally speaking, um, you know, they're pretty content, um, but they have an eye on opportunity. So how do you attract uh, how do you attract top salespeople to your organization, given that they're pretty hard to shift? Yeah, so, um, well, our our endeavors really. So we're an agency. So mm -hmm. uh, the salespeople that we're recruiting are really for our clients. Sure. You know, of course, our recruiters technically are salespeople, right? Mm -hmm. So that's really my role here is to recruit the recruiters. Mm -hmm. But what our recruiters do is we do a lot of outreach directly to the people that you just mentioned, the people that are already employed. Mm -hmm. And and I'll be 100% transparent and honest is we are one of the things that we hold true to here at Build Staffing is that we're not buying into the the algorithms out there, all those things to make your sourcing uh, a lot easier where you're just going to, um, you know, buy into a program and they're just going to send you a bunch of candidates. Most inbound candidates, uh, in our opinion, don't necessarily, uh, you know, bring the best quality. Let's right. just say it that way. So we like to, to hand pick and source the people that are going to really resonate with our clients uh, that like what we just talked about, match their core values and, and match the, the personality that they're looking for and, and whether they're, you know, hunting uh, for new business or if they're just going after internal business, uh, 
deal size matters, all of that. So we have to really uh, dissect specifically what the client needs. And then we go out and look specifically for them. And what are some of the typical things that uh, you know, good salespeople, what are some of the things that get them, you know, pique their interest or get them to think, eh, maybe this is worth having a conversation about? Well, you know, there's, there's no doubt that money talks, sure. right? So, so if you have a compensation package that uh, resonates, and that can can that can take someone's career to another level. Uh, that's going to be a great conversation mm-hmm. starter. Uh, so good salespeople are mostly interested in what's in it for me, right? Yeah. Now that, then, once we once we tie that in, and it doesn't always have to be, you know, base salary and commission. Sure. A lot of our clients, which are our startups, right, are offering. Uh, you know, equity in the company, mm-hmm. right? So, so that can play a good role into the to the uh, compensation package that really entices good salespeople. But at the end of the day, uh, salespeople want to be passionate about what they're selling, good ones, right? Mm-hmm. So, if if we can sell them on our client's opportunity of what their product or service is, and that candidate, that salesperson, can say, "Yeah, I can buy into that. I can sell that." And you're going to offer me this much, uh, say, on a base salary plus a uh, OTE kind of compensation. Sure. Um, absolutely, I can. I want to at least hear more. Push me through the process, and then they they do that. Um, and the funny thing is, is you know, a good number of the people that we recruit obviously are in the millennial space, mm-hmm. right? So uh, I heard something recently where you know the the baby boomers you know, pretty much had, you know, one job their entire life, maybe two, yeah, right? Yeah. So, but, but, but the millennials are going to have 17 to 19 different jobs Gosh. throughout their career, right? And we see that often. We see people moving jobs every one to two years, mm-hmm. um, looking for different opportunities or just different uh, aspects of a company that they can be more passionate about uh, and buy into. And, and that's why I think a lot of them are moving. And I think you raise a raise a very um, a very important point because yeah I've seen that research and it's I'm starting to see it myself in in the experiences that we have and and other people that I know about this idea of uh, you know people moving after one to two years I mean once upon a time you'd have been like oh my goodness somebody they've only been here a year or they've only been here two years now and now you have to get used to the fact that this is going to be a pattern and you have to ad- adapt to it. So I guess part of the issue then is that you almost have to be constantly recruiting. You, absolutely, 100%. And the one, thing, the one caveat that I will say to that, mm-hmm. that, that candidates, salespeople should be very cautious of. If they are the ones that are looking for other opportunities on a, you know, say every other year yeah. type basis, make sure that it's not, more than that, meaning you're not changing jobs every six to eight months, because a lot of our clients, the hiring managers on the other side, look at that and they call it hoppy. Yeah, we don't want someone that's hopping around to different companies all the time, um, because then that just essentially means you're going to only going to be here six to eight months, mm-hmm. and then we're going to have to replace you. So they're not looking for that. They want someone that's going to at least give them a couple years of great uh, execution. And then you know, if you choose to move on, that's great. But we're also here to refill that role. Yeah, and I think the uh, a part of that is, I mean, obviously in sales, I mean, in most organizations, it probably takes you six months before, you know, three to six months, depending on the sale, before a salesperson is highly productive. So if somebody's leaving after a year, you've really only kind of got six months of them at their, at their, you know, at their most productive. But I do think Very it's an, true. but I do think it's an interesting phenomena is that uh, is for us as hiring managers or, or, or people running companies is to start to get used to turnover. Cause this, a lot of people struggle with the idea of, they think always turnover is a bad thing. Right. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think that they have to get more comfortable with the fact is that you're going to have turnover because you know, you're going to have different generations with different expectations. And, and uh, you have to figure out how you can make that work for you. Right. hundred uh, percent. I think the, like you said, the always be recruiting kind of mindset, uh, whether you're doing it internally, mm-hmm. uh, you're doing your own recruiting, your own, uh, whether you have your own team or you say, let's just say you put it on the, the plate of the VP of sales and they're taking care of it. Um, or you hire an agency like us. Uh, the, the endeavor generally never ends because you, 
Uh, you, you also don't want probably people to be too comfortable mm -hmm. in your organization, right? You want to make sure that they see that there's a churning yeah. of energy coming in and out of the business so that they're not just sitting back saying, well, I've been here five years. I've got the seniority. I've got this and the other. So you want to make sure that there's at least that good energy coming in and out of the business at all times. And that's one of the things that we try to do with our clients to make sure that we're giving them the right uh, candidates that, that they're looking for. And um, even if they have to, you know, maybe push some people out in order to bring in that new energy, that happens. Uh, but at the same time, it's all about what's best for the organization mm -hmm. and what's going to drive revenue for them. What are some of the different uh, changes that you have seen as we start, as the generations start to turn over? I mean, what are, th are there things that people are looking for, like salespeople and, and other um, roles that are looking for that maybe once upon a time wouldn't have been as big a, uh, an issue? Well, you know, to be honest with you, I think it runs the gamut. I think it kind of depends on each individual organization and each individual hiring manager, right? They all have their their uh, thoughts and um, uh, interests that they're looking to fill. Um, numbers talk, right? So uh, one thing that if you have salespeople watching, you know, your your show here, and one thing that I will definitely recommend is if you are if you have a good track record and your numbers are are mm -hmm. up there you want to make sure that those are in your resume it's too, it, it it blows our minds sometimes yeah. when we see salespeople in that resume who you say I did this and I hit these goals well what are your numbers we want to see that right and so do the hiring managers they mm -hmm. want to see that um, that that track record of success um, you know, the funny thing is that still uh, is a big thing, mainly just for uh, completion and and showing that you can get through something is a college degree. Even though some of the best salespeople um, maybe didn't do so well in school, mm -hmm. but they can sell, you know, ice to an Eskimo or whatever it is, right? <laughs> but, you know, a lot of the companies out there, a lot of hiring managers are still looking for that college degree to make sure that they can see that somebody's actually uh, completed something and that they, they saw it all the way through. Um, we are hearing hiring managers ask questions such as, you know, what are you passionate about? Right. Right. I mean, an open-ended question that, that can just be anything. And some people are falling flat on, on even just coming up with something that inspires them. Mm -hmm. Right. Or what are they passionate about? Um, we've had some people say, they came to the interview with too much energy. We've had some people come with no energy. Um, and it, it, it blows our mind sometimes, too, that some of the foot in mouth disease that some people have when they're in interviews. But you just want to make sure that you're presenting yourself in a positive light and that you're answering those questions to, uh, to the best of your ability to, to present yourself to that, that organization. But they're basically dissecting just about everything you say. And so you want to make sure that you're not just kind of shooting from the hip. And that's why we prep our candidates very well for our interviews so that uh, they understand who they're meeting with. We think that's very key. They know they have a good right. profile of the person that's going to be talking to them, but also giving them some insight as to, you know, the, these are the things that you're going to be asked. Let's let's work through that. We role play that with them a lot so just to make sure that, you know, that answer is you know, yeah. compelling enough, at least to us, so that when we pass you on to that hiring manager, they know that you've uh, you've got a great answer coming. Yeah, I mean, and I think that's really critical because you don't want your first experience of an interview in five years to be the interview. Right? You want to have actually done a little <laughs> right. bit of <laughs> a little bit right. of practice. Yeah. And here's another thing that's um, that as a phenomenon as I talk to people is is from a candidate point of view is 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 people are uh, seem to be more now saying, OK, I'm going to decide where I want to live and then I'm going to find a job that accommodates me. Maybe it's remote working or whatever, but less and less am I going to go and place myself like near to this building? Because what happens in two years if I get let go or the company goes down and I'm in a high cost area that I don't want to be in? So have you seen sure. have you seen that with candidates more and more wanting to kind of choose their location first and then find the the opportunity. Yeah. I mean, it's an interesting, um, I guess, dichotomy there, whether you, you take that approach and just say, I'm going to hope for the best with either finding something in this area mm -hmm. or being able to work remote. And we all know that, we're, you know, remote working is becoming a, uh, a pretty prevalent thing mm -hmm. with, with many organizations. However, and I'll just give some experiences that sure. we have with our current clients is, you know, 
they will essentially maybe look at on paper the perfect candidate for their role. But if they just live too far away, they're not even going to consider talking mm -hmm. to them. Right. And, you know, a lot of our clients are in Silicon Valley. So if you've never been up there driving in traffic, it's I mean, even if you're you may be on a map close, but you yeah, know, I, I worked. That, that, that's a, that's I worked two in, hours in traffic that they don't want you to deal with. So. Yeah, I worked in Silicon Valley and during the dot com um, era, so I'm I'm very familiar with it. And today, but I, I, there's a great point though, because in some ways it's a very short sighted view from supposedly the most progressive companies. Because I mean, Silicon Valley is ridiculously expensive. The rents are sure. hugely high. The commute times are ridiculous, and they're supposed to be kind of high tech on the edge companies, but yet they still right. want people to come into a, a brick and mortar building. <laughs> 100 percent and you know we, we we obviously have the roles that are you know more outside mm -hmm. sales so they don't have to necessarily be in the office every day or maybe once a week they have to come into the office and then there's those others that they want you in the office every day you know we have one client up there that um that did their best to be as close to say caltrain mm -hmm. as possible so that and you know you could live anywhere within that network and get to the office um, without having to sit in hours sure. and hours worth of traffic. So that, that's one thing that they look for is, okay, are you at least along this, this route here that you can, even if you live in the city, mm -hmm. um, can take the train down and, and get to work within, you know, an hour or so. Right. So uh, as we bump up against the end of our time here, uh, Mark, what are some other things that you would tell people to bear in mind when looking to recruit salespeople particularly? Uh, when they're, if you're looking to recruit salespeople, I would absolutely um, dive into um, each individual candidate's profile to make sure that you have uh, you have set out the expectations that that what you're looking for that matches what that person uh, is bringing to the table. Um, I would also say, you know, even though some of our clients operate this way, I would also say don't necessarily discount someone just because maybe they don't visually produce a good uh, representation of themselves because they still could be um, the perfect candidate to sell your service and product. And maybe you can get them over, you know, whatever that profile picture they chose for their <laughs> LinkedIn profile, something like that. But I, I would absolutely say, you know, um, make sure that you know what you're going after. And we are always looking for um, new partner clients that, that need that assistance that don't want to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. We are 100% contingent, so we don't get paid unless we make those placements. And so uh, I, you know, I would love to have a conversation with anyone that's looking to, uh, to hire a sales team, even if it's one person up to 10 or 20, 30 people. We can absolutely uh, dive into those profiles that you're looking for and we have the experts here to to search for them so you don't have to do it. Yeah, that's fantastic. Listen, Mark, before you go, I mean, just give give the website again and where people can find out more about you and contact you. Absolutely. Just head over to buildstaffing.com, B-U-I-L-D staffing.com, and you can get a pretty good in, um, intro to who we are and what we do. We are a boutique agency. We're relatively small, but we operate that way on purpose, mm -hmm. right? And we, uh, we give the most personal service to our clients. We're not spamming resumes like you can get from any of those online services. We handpick the people that we send over to you and we make sure that you get the best people. So. Fantastic. My name is John Golden, Says Pop Online, Says Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. Uh, great to talk to Mark Gunlock and I will see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.